guys, uh, today I'm going to do a short review and this is going to be on uh, the 1911. Well, let me just show you, this 1911 is empty here. Okay, I do have a snap cap in it, which I keep it all my 1911s. Um, the 1911, uh, it's been around for a very, 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 very long time. Um, it's a very popular gun because of the, the history behind it. Uh, this, this gun here has been in just about every war there has been and it's just been reproduced in so many different reiterations. John Browning was the inventor of the 1911 and i um, happy to say it's over 100 years old. Uh, your 1911s mainly were all steel or carbon steel. Uh, they were all single action. They had your standard slide and uh, your safeties here, slide safeties. Most of them have your beaver tail safeties, your grip safety. But you can't fire it, there's two safeties. You have to press this in like this. This will let you pull the trigger. And then this here too you can lock. I'm going to go ahead and for uh, uh, just the video purposes, I gotta load this back up with this dummy round. Loading a 1911, you should always load uh, the gun, okay, with a bullet in the magazine, okay. Never slap this slide down without a bullet in the chamber. This will prevent uh, from your extractor getting out of alignment and other problems. Drop it in. You can do it that way. Uh, most of your 1911s will have some type of sight. This has a three dot uh, Trigicon sight. Uh, they will have some type of rear sight and front sight. Some have adjustable ones. This particular one has a uh, shrouded uh, adjustable one, adjustable, and uh, will either be in 45, 380, 9 millimeter. This one, this particular one, as a 45 and it says Nighthawk right in there. NHC, Nighthawk Custom. Um, most of them will come with some type of uh, serrations front and back and those are meant for when you're cocking it, when you're holding it so you can pull it back if your hands are greasy or dirty. We have a slide release right here. Uh, I recommend loading it the way I showed you. You have some type of match grade, either skeletonized or solid. It's the little Allen wrench in there so you can adjust it. Uh, you'll have a magazine release. See that? Takes the magazine out. You'll have checkering rear and front to hold it so you can grip on the gun. Uh, most of them will have some type of ribbing on the top. This has stippling, so it's a little bit different. This particular model just has that. Sweet. Okay. Uh, we'll have uh, usually a uh, barrel bushing right in here. This one does not. See where the barrel is? This just has a proprietary barrel with an inside sleeve. Some of the barrel bushing here and your most uh, most common on your 1911s is the barrel bushing that you would unlock and you could pull it out. Uh, they'll have a guide rod here. This particular one's a one-piece uh, steel guide rod. They may have a recessed slide stop, they do this for your finger so it doesn't hit it. Or if you have a laser, so the laser doesn't hit it. That normally doesn't have it anyway, but it's just a precaution that they do on it. Uh, your Now, on your 1911s, some will have an upper cut here, and that cut is to give you a little bit finger grip, so you can get your grip up in there and get a little closer. Some will be a bobtailed. This is bobtailed. They'll have a cut here. Some have wooden grips, some have uh, steel uh, metal grips, some have polymer grips, it just depends on the gun. Like I say, they have uh, just about every, all of the 1911s will have a slide safety. This this pulls up here and locks into here so you can't fire it. Some will have dual slide safeties. Okay. Uh, also, the beaver tail, uh, nice thing about that, allows this hammer to come back down like this so it doesn't hurt your hand. Okay. Uh, they are all single action, but they have phenomenal triggers. Um, you know, they are 
come in stainless steel. This particular one is polished stainless steel. They have uh, carbon, uh, carbon steel, many, many different types uh, that you could get. So this particular one's a Bob Marvel. But uh, if you're going to get a 1911, you don't have to spend like an arm and a leg, okay? You really don't. You don't have to spend like thousands of dollars. I mean, you could get a nice 1911 for 500 bucks. This particular one's a little bit more expensive. When you do get a more expensive uh, 1911, the benefits of the gun you're going to get, it's going to shoot better groups. Uh, everything is going to be more handmade. It's going to be less. Uh, I'll show you here how they do this. You can see the tolerances here, if you look at this gun. And even on the back of this, how tight those tolerances are. You can barely get a piece of paper in those tolerances. So your tolerances are going to be a lot tighter. Uh, you're going to get the extra attention to detail on the gun. And, you know, that depends on you. I've come to really like the Nighthawk Customs. Uh, this is, you know, the Nighthawk Customs that I like. I, uh, it's a nice gun. It fires good. It's more a very practical gun. Um, and it's not too big. It's not too clumsy compared to a lot of the other guns that I've had. And you've seen some of the other guns that I had, uh, you know, Prismatic Duelers or Desert Eagles. Uh, the 1911 is just a really nice, really, really nice gun if you look at that. See? But I wanted to show you that and just, you know, tell you a little information about 1911s. And, uh, you know, if you're in the market for getting one, you know, what you can get. Uh, you know, this particular one uh, I ordered from uh, Nathal Custom. It took me about six months to get in. Um, they customized it the way I wanted to. And um, it was expensive, but it wasn't out of this world expensive. The nice thing about Nighthawk Custom or Wilson Combat, I'm just zipping up a bag here, uh, you can make payments on it. So if you're young enough where you don't think you're going to get a heart attack and die, um, you can go and, you know, depending on when you're going to have it paid off, you can start making some payments on it. And then eventually, you know, when it's paid off, you know, your gun will come in and uh, you'll get it delivered and uh, you'll have it. You know, it, uh, both companies uh, make good guns, but I like the Nighthawk Custom because um, it's the only one out of the two you know, a Nighthawk Custom or Wilson Combat that you could get with a beaver, uh, with the uh, Bobtail. Wilson Combat does not make Bobtail guns anymore. They make their uh, blended magwell and then they make their uh, rounded, uh, rounded magwell. And uh, I, I just do not like the, um, you know, that type. I had one. And ever since I had it, I didn't like it. I liked my Ed Brown better than I liked the night, the, the Wilson Combat. And this one I love because uh, I was able to order it just the way I wanted to. When I talked to him in the company, I talked to him and I says, you know, um, this is the way I want it ordered. And, you know, this is, what, this is what I wanted. And you can see here, too, on this side of it, how nice that looks. Okay, let me show you that. It turned out really nice, uh, real beautiful gun. I wanted stainless steel. I don't like any guns that are not stainless steel. I would never buy a gun in a 1911, a non-stainless steel gun. I just wouldn't. I just don't think they're worth it. So, um, having the uh, 1911, I think it's really nice in the Nighthawk Custom. Uh, you get a lot of quality for your price. You get more quality than you get in the Wilson Combat. Wilson Combat, you've got to pay for everything. They, they nickel and dime you. Yeah, it takes long. You might take three years to get a super grade made. They've got other ones that aren't super grades. So if I ever get a Wilson Combat done, I'm getting one made. I'm not getting a blended magwell over here. I'm going to have a regular magwell, and then I'm sending it to Ed Brown for them to uh, go ahead and uh, bobtail it. And then it'll be actually what I want. But thanks a lot for tuning in, and this is just a 
uh, review of a 1911 to tell you some features of what you can get on them and some features of what you can't. But uh, you should have no problem. $800, $500 could get you a pretty nice 1911. Uh, really, Ruger makes a really nice 1911, and Sig Sauer, they make a really nice uh, 1911. For quality wise, for the amount what you get for your quality, for your price, uh, there's some Kimbers, but I would probably get a Sig Sauer before I would get the Kimber because it has less of uh, the metal injection parts. Of course, a gun with this quality here in this expense, there's not going to be any metal injection parts. Uh, some of the Ed Browns. Um, uh, serial numbers uh, 1700 and below, like 1700 XXX had metal injection parts. You could always call Ed Brown and talk to Justin there and ask him if your gun has some metal injection molded parts uh, because a few years ago the beaver tail safety, hammer strut, thumb uh, safety, thumb slide safety and the slide release usually were a metal injection parts that they used in that gun and uh, they won't change them for you for free, you'd have to pay for them but it's probably about $600 worth of parts that if you changed out then you would have a gun that was all um, you know, uh, metal machine parts but thanks a lot for tuning into the video I appreciate everybody viewing and you know, just tell me how you like the video um, and uh, please, any comments you have, please leave them